your hook key, located right here. You just kind of put it in there and rotate it until you can feel it clicking. And then turn it and it will open. Your hood will come down to you. We'll start up in the upper corner over there with the yellow dipstick. That is your engine oil. That's your dipstick for that. I don't see nothing yellow. Oh, there. Okay. Your um, Oops, sorry. engine fill is located right here. Engine right. oil fill. The dipstick for the transmission is the red one. Right. Do they uh, do they commonly use them? I've never had one these days. Um, oil, they'll use about a quart every 1,000 miles. Okay, so um, it is something you don't, you don't treat it like a car. You can check it. Yep. Okay. And the transmission, it should never need fluid. And over in here for your engine coolant. Okay. And they do have markings on where your full levels are on it. And right now, believe it or not, it is full. Okay. <laughs> Down in front here for your two coach batteries. They're for the interior portion. These long, these ones down here. These the two over here, right. They are deep, deep cycle cycles. marine batteries. Okay. And then this one over here is the engine battery. Alrighty. Engine battery. Over in this corner, your power steering. Okay. And windshield washer fluid is Back in the in corner. corner. Okay, cool. Alright. And what's this up here? Brake. That's the brake master sound. Okay. But I read there was a recall on. Huh? I read there was, was recall, there a recall on, on brakes. On no brake. Something about the brakes. I there read was it. There a recall on the. Um, Something brakes. Calipers. That's right. You're right. Yep. All the calipers. Was it, was the recall handled? Yep. Okay. That's what we place. wanted to ask. Yeah, that's that's what what why you, you said that. <laughs> Right, cool. That was the only major, I thought, recall on it. Both sides. Okay. All right, we'll head on down this side. This door is easy enough to get in, but it's almost impossible to get out of that thing without falling out of it. Oh, it is a door. We didn't yeah. even realize mm -hmm. that. No, I knew there was a door here. I was reading the paperwork on it. I thought there was some kind of a weird step or something that came down on that. You say it's easy enough to get in. How would you get into this? Um, you use that extra step. Yep, yeah. okay. well, there's the step and I'll put right. in. But getting out, it's kind of weird getting out of it that yeah, way. Yeah, when the emergency it was on fire, you just didn't know. I was wondering about that. All right, these storage compartments are right in here. We we'll only open up halfway. Uh -huh. They are empty. Right. When you say they only open up halfway, they only open up. Yeah, halfway. because of the slide. Oh, I see. Uh huh. Yeah, the other doors will come up on an angle, That's but good. these will only open up. So you don't want to put anything in there you yep. need to get at too often. Right. Yeah, they allow for enough storage on them. Okay. The biggest thing with storage is you got to also understand is storage is weight. The more weight you carry, the more fuel you use. Right, of course. Yep. So. It means no overpacking, Bear. It's down to one of those things, are is you got to watch what you carry because you don't want to carry the weight. Right. These two compartments right here are combined. Mm -hmm. This is your water compartment right. for the most part. Down below here, you will have your outside shower. Okay. Gives you hot and cold running water out here. That's cool. You have your city water hookup. This is where you'll hook your the black hose. Right by the outside hose. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's the black. Excuse me. That's his black system. Yeah, that's his black. That one. is Oops. the Santa flusher. Yeah, right. That jet sprays the black tank. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> your city water is located <laughs> I got up here. The sun we don't want to won't go into the interior. I know. <laughs> yep. Okay. You have your hot. Cold, um, low point drains. Right. Hot and cold, and then your tank drain. Right. Right in here, and this valve will fill the fresh water tank 
when you're hooked to the city water hookup. I see. Okay. Then they also got your cable TV and your telephone right. hookup your telephone in here. Hookup right there. Yep. Sweet. Sweet. That's cool. Dump valves located down below here. Are you familiar with the dump valve system? It's been a, been a while. Uh, been a while since I used one. I see you got your hose and everything there, and uh, yep. there should be connectors and stuff for that, right? Or, right, they're on it. It's got double valves on it. Don't recall, what were the two valves for on? The large valve is your black water, your sink, or your um, toilet water. Right. The small one is your gray, your sink and shower water. Okay, okay. Everything will drain down through here. This will simply turn down. Right. You can turn it up or turn it down. Oh, now I've got a mess to clean up. It's a good thing too. That's chemical. So it's been Used winterized. To deodorize the tanks. Okay. So I'll clean that up for you before yeah. it starts making things blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, you would just turn that down. Right, and there's a connector for this for the unit. Right there. Right there you go. That connects on where that cap came off of. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to leave that compartment open. I saw a bad movie about that once. <laughs> Burgers all the way down. Give you your 50 amp service here. Adapter down to 30 amp. Adapter down to 15 amp. So you can plug it into the house. That's cool. That is your cord there. The yellow one. Here we got more storage. And this is the another tank drain. And this is your transfer box. Tank drain for what? Your um, sink. That's a sink. tank drain for your fresh water tank. Okay. Yep. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. These units come out automatically. I would imagine the skirts come out automatically. The pop-ups or the slide-outs come out. They just pop. Right. Out. Yep. They come out with it. Right. Here we are. Here. Yep. The generator compartment. Anything in particular I need to know about it, Jeff? Sure. Engine oil check and fill is done from right in here. Okay. How often should I be doing that? Daily, if you're using it daily. Okay. If not, just every so often. Mm -hmm. uh, take a look at it. Your drain is located here to drain the oil. Mm -hmm. And your air cleaner is located in here. I keep it simple to get at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the air cleaner, <laughs> I doubt you'll ever change it. Really? I really do, yeah. How about the oil? I mean, like, they might, they might uh, every hundred hours or one year. Okay. Yep. Well, did you guys check it beforehand? Or we no changed it. You changed it. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So I don't have to worry about it for yep. a little while. Yeah, the engine oil's been changed. The chassis's been serviced. All right, cool. And your start-stop switch is located right here. Okay. It also starts from inside. This is mm -hmm. the service one. And then these two circuit breakers. Right. If the generator should get in an overload situation, they'll kick off. All you have to do is push them back to reset them. Okay. And, okay. The, and it may be that only one at a time will kick and you'll lose half the stuff inside. Mm -hmm. um, such as one air conditioner and the other one still works. And will that thing run both air conditioners? Yep. Okay. It'll run both airs. It'll run everything in the coach. Okay, cool. What's the what's the handle down there at the bottom for us? Looks like a slide out pin. Oh, that's the latch. Oh, that's, that's the, where the that's latch goes. Right. Yep. Up. Oh, okay. You'll find that on all your doors. Yes, honey. Yeah. Uh, that I'm really not positive on. The last time I remember, they were about ninety gallon. Seems like I finally keyed on the lock. Yep. Yeah. 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 It burns 87 octane. Do not use any higher. Okay. The cheap stuff. <laughs> really good to know. Yeah, if you burn higher octane, it confuses the computer. 
I will not do that. Yep. I will happily not do that. <laughs> the, uh, I've got a, I got an Infinity sitting over in the parking lot, and my vehicle's been taking it in the pile of things. Even my motorcycle yeah. has to be 90, 90 93. 93. <laughs> yeah, my son's got a car like that, and I really pity him when it comes to the pump. <laughs> Stairway to the highway, <laughs> up to the roof. Uh, not right now. We would like to see you go up there twice a year, check roof sealants, um, preferably once in the spring, once in the fall. I had my left knee replaced four months ago, so I'll be good in about another, another two months. It's also a nice place to uh, sunbathe. Wait, it would hold you? What's that? It would hold you up there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a plywood roof. Yeah, but I wouldn't. Want it. Wow, how about that? Um, sporting events, Privately. Uh, if you're going to be sitting up there on chairs, I would recommend the ones with the rounded legs instead of right. the four legs because right. of punching through the roof. Well, for me, I'd recommend railings. <laughs> <laughs> More storage? Uh, you're going to find that a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's got a full basement. Nice, it's got a light and stuff. Water heater. All right, there we go. Drain plug needs to be installed in the spring. It'll just screw right into here. That I really don't see why you would need any information on that. Uh, pressure relief valve located right in here. Do keep in mind that may drip water when this is in operation, so don't be alarmed if you see it dripping. Uh, besides that, we'll show you inside how it fires off. It's both gas and electric. Okay, cool. I'm familiar with them pretty much. It's the same unit, probably. It's the same one we have in the pop-up unit. Is it? Good. Tank. Hopefully that the, 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 it won't leak like the pop-up did. That's what it looks like. Uh, How do you, is 90 there, pounds, maybe. 90 pounds, maybe. Yeah. Not 90, 90 pounds, sorry. How do, you, where's the, um, how do you know how much is in there? There's a gauge located right here. It tells you exactly how full the tank how full is. is it? Your full is over here all the way down, and to the bottom would be your empty. Uh, and where do you get that filled at? Uh, you can get that filled uh Campgrounds, uh, any normally uh, RV dealerships would have the propane. So you have it here? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, we just filled it this morning. Okay. Um, these two devices will be used for filling. Your service valve is located right here to turn the systems on. Okay. Remember when you're turning it on, full open. If you're turning it off, fully closed. The valve will leak in between. Is there any reason to have it off right now if we're going to fig it and heat it up later tonight? No, nope. you can leave it on. Yep. Is that what you did instead? Is you put it on? Uh, um, just there's, it? there's two talks for the propane tank, the lawyer's talks and then ours. Right. I personally, I turn it on in the spring, turn it off in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, lawyers will tell you to turn it off right. every time you're not using an appliance inside. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, Don't look like it's hard to do. For cold for cold weather use, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, people use these in the cold weather. Yep. I mean, if I jumped in this thing now and grew up my thought process, we'll talk a little more as we go along. I'm going to take you too long here. But, uh, the, um, um, my concern is when it's 28 degrees outside, driving like down today. the road with it like today, if I wanted to leave for Florida today, and not going to, but if I did, okay, mm -hmm. uh, what things would I, other than not being able to put water in it, not being able to use the toilet or as long as you uh, you keep heat in it, you can use everything, right. even the water. Was um, like the water holding tank it freeze? Let it. The the holding tanks and the um, fresh water holding tank are all heated. They're all heated. Oh, all okay. Heated the there night. you go. Heated by the heat. The furnace. Inside. Yep. The furnace. Oh, okay. Yep. It has a heat duct going Is, down into that. What about the, the what about? Which runs off the propane. Off the propane, off right. Off the propane. Yep. And if you have a night with, with a, a 90 pound, you'd probably get, probably get a week out of them. Oh, you'll get a week out of them, maybe a week and a half. 
Mm -hmm. Yep, depending on how well yeah, that's you not want that, to that's eat not it. that expensive. That's the equivalent mm -hmm. of four, two, what about, three or four times. Well, what keeps the um, water pipes from freezing up? Are they insulated? They're, they're, they're all inside. They're, they're all, all heated inside. Heated inside the unit. So okay. You can, use, you can use the bathroom and stuff like that. That's but, why. I, but you can't. You don't want to use it like just take it out like on a Friday or Saturday night. Uh, take a dump and have all the water running, and then bring it back and let it set for a week in freezing weather because everything will freeze. Exactly, because it will freeze. Because then you got it. Then if you're going to use it, you better you got to plan on keeping keeping the, the whole unit heated until heated. you're ready to dump it yep. or the weather warms up. And heating means using the furnace that's in the coach because if you have uh, electric heaters in them, they don't go into the basement. Right. Ah. So you have to use Yep. Okay, that's, that's that was good. thank you. Now, the, on the other hand, there you can use an electric heat and just keep it low, lower than the thermostat for the gas heat, and it will only kick in when it needs to. You see what I'm saying? Once the temperature drops below a certain level. So there's not electric heat on board this thing. No, there is no, no electric heat. So I mean, plugging it into the house and letting it. Keeping it warm electrically is not an option. Right. You have to. So, what did you mean by the. Uh, uh, the people buy those like little cube heaters yeah. and stuff. And yeah, stick but them that in. won't heat the basement. That won't heat the basement. Right. right. And if you've got black water going into your toilet, you can freeze things up. Right. And have them create a lot of damage. Yep. Which is what we don't want to do. Exactly. Okay. Got that? I got it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm got, I've got um, 19 minutes. No, you have. I'm going to stop it in a minute. Oh, no, what's this thing? Okay, we're in the refrigerator. Not a whole lot to do in here besides once a year we would like to see you go through and wipe it out okay. with a damp rag. Okay. That's your refrigerator. What's this valve for? That is for the ice maker. Okay. Oh, you're kidding me. It makes ice? So you can shut the ice maker off. Okay. Okay. Would you want to do something out here probably when it's cold? It's, Excuse me? I said you want to do that probably when it's cold. Yeah. It. Yep. And your furnace exhaust. Right. Remember, this area gets extremely hot when that's in operation. Yep. The, uh, it's just one outside plug in, yeah. Looks like it. Yep. Just the one. Wow. The, uh, the, the awning usage is there buttons in there for the awning usage, or are they all by hand? Uh, this is a manual one. This is a manual Yep. These two compartments here, make sure there's nothing in those. Okay. Cool, I go up in the very way up here in the back. Hmm? Okay, cool. Okay. And then there's one more in the front of the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't short your own storage. Jeez. Nope, that goes up inside too. That's kind of, that's kind of yeah. nice. Really nice. And then for the awning. Now this you can put in your storage compartment then. Oh. Okay. We'll start with the rear arm, only because it has one less feature than the front arm. You see somebody got some Velcro on it. So let's un-Velcro it. What was the reason for that be? That I couldn't tell you, because here's the travel lock. You would flip that out. Turn your knob towards the front just enough to make it loose. And then the same thing up front. Yeah, it does look good. For some reason, maybe it rattled or something. Safety. Flip out your travel lock, turn your knob forward. The only difference with the front arm is, is with this, you have to go up here and pull that hook down. I see. That, that unlocks the only really to nice thing out. to Nice thing to know. <laughs> yep. And then you got to strap it there. Oh, wow. Amazing. If you'd like to operate that arm, I'll operate this one down here. Since they're both the same, and we'll operate what? What are we doing with it? Alright, we're going to slide this arm out all the way to the end. Then you're going to kind of pull on it or lean on it and turn that knob tight. Oh, I see. That sets the tension to the fabric so that your fabric is torn. Okay. Now, 
you're you're ducking to get under it, so lift this arm and just slide it up a little oh, bit. Oh, how nice! I was wondering about that. Right. How but nice. You want to try to keep it as low as possible just for wind, because as the sun comes down, it's going to give more cover. What? That's a hell of a one. That's cool. That'll work. That's a heck of All right. One. Three basic little simple rules here. Uh, light rains. Mm -hmm. Tilt the one end slightly so the water runs off. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Somewhere I've heard that before, but I never really yep. thought about it. We did that so in the second combo. rule. Heavy winds, heavy rains, always put the unit away. Okay. And the third rule. If you're going to be leaving the campground for the day, take the time to put the awning away because of afternoon thunderstorms. Okay. If there's nobody there to put it away, it will be ripped off by thunderstorms. All right. So just take a few seconds and roll it up. It doesn't look like it's that big of an ordeal. Nope. Okay. And we'll go ahead with that. And just reverse the procedure. Now the button down. Nope. The button. Lift them. Yep, and now allow it to slide down. Okay. Loosen your knob. Okay. Up there. Okay. Now, right here, underneath here, there's a small latch. I see it. Pull down on that, and that will allow that arm to pass. This strap, by the way, you can walk it off the other end and take it off. I don't recommend that because if you lose it, it makes work in the morning difficult. Bring it down to this end and tie it off to this arm. Right. And we'll keep it out of the way. Maybe one day to That could be. It's wrapped up. Located right here is your lock now. To roll the awning up, you just flip in the opposite so, direction. Is it and, on each side or is it? Nope, just on the front. Okay. And remember, it will only go one direction at a time. Okay. You flip it to roll down, you flip it to roll up. Wait, okay. how are you doing that? Good firm grip on it. Right. Because it is spring loaded. Right. And if it gets out of your hand, it's going to forgive you a few times. So then you're going to take the abuse. And you're going to break it. Yep. And do I lock it in or anything? It just stays up. Yep, so lock it. Okay. Put those down. Then turn your knob towards the rear just enough to snug it up. Toward the rear? Yep, towards the rear of the coach. Counterclockwise. And I guess we'll put the rest of that once and see yeah. about it. It never hurts to have it. You know what? I believe that's what they did. Yeah, it just really never hurts to have it. And that's that they probably used for the strap. I can't think of any other reason to do that. This rod I'm going to stick in this toy compartment. Okay. There we go. We're going to start filling them up for you. What a deal. <laughs> and that'll keep that out of the way. Right. There you go. All right. Fantastic. Any questions on the exterior before we had that? Nope. Go through. Everything up front in the dash area. Let me get out of the way. I don't think we're going to blow up, so I think we're all right. No. Nope, we're fine. I'm just taking the film so we can look back on it. So you can uh, Okay, you want to... They just lift up. Yep, you just pick it up. And let me get you a little room here. Where did they put that switch? Up there. Up there. Against the chair. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, shoot. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, hold on there. Somebody move the chair back. I gotta bring it up. You have to sit down to do it. No? Oh. Sorry about that. So yeah, we yeah, always have to move close. the chair before we put this light out. So. Uh it's it's on the very end of the arm that that is the one that rotates it, the one on the other side moves it back and forth. There's actually a uh, a lever. Yep, there's a lever down along the side that'll tilt the back. That's what I wanted, the back. Yep. You're okay now. Got to remember that aspect. Will it stop automatically if there's pressure? 
like that, it right? It stinks in here. Yeah, uh, eventually it will, yes. I'm going to rip the seed off. I don't... The propane stinks. I gotta, you you should smoke. shut it off. Huh? You should shut off the propane. It stinks. We're okay. We're okay. The burners are turned off now. One of the burners is on. That's the only reason for it. You're okay. Okay. How much trouble do they have, seriously, with these kind of things, with these with these slide outs? With the slide outs? Yeah. Not too much trouble at all. Are they belt driven or something? Are they? No, they're actually a, um, they a motor that runs a, um, a screw. Like a um, shouldn't say it's a screw. <laughs> it's actually big metal wheels, like cogs, okay. that turn. Yep, the motors run the cogs, but. The motor is like next to nothing. I mean, um, it doesn't have to have a lot of strength because everything just, it's gear driven and it works so smooth. Mm -hmm. And of course your back ones are even smaller yet because right. they're smaller slides. Right. Yeah. Right, okay. All right, if we'd like to sit in the driver's seat, we'll go through the dash items with you. Okay. Now we need to put your seat back to where you <laughs> like it. We couldn't figure out how to move that seat yeah, when we were test driving it. Okay. okay, your other set of uh, keys are in the ignition. I'm putting this set right here. So we have them both. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll start on the dash, the dash switches. Um, the first one up there in that corner is your overdrive on off. Okay. Um, if you're in any large hilly areas and okay. your transmission is shifting constantly, shut the overdrive off. That would be this. Yep. That would be off. Yep. And it it'll give you an indication the on the dash that it's off. Otherwise, you leave it on. Yep, leave it on. Okay. The switch right beside that is the generator start-stop switch. Okay. Push down on the switch to start the generator, and you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you have to hold until it's completely running. Uh -oh. Go ahead. All right. Looks solid blue. Yep. And then up on it to shut it down. The next switch up above is your mirror controls. Right. Your right and your left, you and then up that. down side side. What is this one here? That is the mirror heaters. Oh. Okay, cool. To heat the mirrors. So if that's on, you got heat. Yep. Okay. We'll go down below there to where it says emergency start. Mm -hmm. If the engine battery would be dead, and it is common because uh, they're not used near as much as what you would use your car, right? but it still has a computer drawing. Right. If it is dead when you get in here, you push that switch down and hold it mm -hmm. and turn the key with the other hand. It brings those other two batteries over here in to that's jump start that's kind the of, engine. That's kind of awesome, isn't it? Yeah, That's kind of it's awesome nice to have. Hell of a mm -hmm. Yeah, hell of a feature. Um, they've learned that since these computers started mm -hmm. getting in these things that they do draw the batteries dead. <laughs> wow, okay. The next switch right there is located TV antenna booster. Right. Um, that amplifies the signal going to the um, antenna, the TV antenna. Okay. To give you a clear picture. Right, okay. This picks up, this, this is set up for digital, too. And um... I think they put a digital converter in it. Yeah, yep, they, they, up there it is. So yeah, they did put your digital converter in. Converter in it, so as you have, when the digital yep. converter is turned on, the uh, red light's on. Yeah, if you turn that switch there on, you'll get another switch or a light up here. Yep, oh, right there. And does this one always stay on then? Or? Yeah, that one will stay on as long as there's electric. Mm -hmm. Okay, it would plug in. That makes sense. Okay, okay. All right, your next switch down below there would be for your fans or your dash fans up overhead. Gives you high and low fan speeds on them. only work when we're running or? Uh, you'll need the key on for that. Now, they are actually designed as defrost fans to help assist the defrosters, but you can turn them on yourselves. Okay. You just have to manually turn them. Uh, okay. Your next switch over would be your fog lights or driving lights. These here. Yep. Okay. And then your. Uh, then your engine brake, exhaust brake. That's this one. Yep. 
And what does this do? Because I've never had one before. Um, the exhaust brake helps slow down the unit. Whenever you let off the throttle, it kicks in and slows the unit down. When would, um, I, when would I find myself needing? It sounds like one of those brakes on the trucks. They say don't exactly use those a Jake brake on a truck. Same it's thing. Like, it's like a Jake yep. brake. Okay. Uh, large downhills. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of heating up the uh, brakes, use the engine retarder, and it'll slow you down. Oh, yeah, this is kind of awesome. Be good okay, if cool. you were coming down a big mountain. Yeah, that could happen. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> like that movie, that guy going down over the hill. <laughs> What's the square one? Okay, above which, that, this above one, it. This one here. Yeah. This is the mirrors. That just oh, the mirrors. Space. That's right. He said that. Okay. okay. And down below that, then would be for your uh, headlights. Your P for one. parking, and then your other one for lights. That's your dimmer switch. Right. Okay. Your cruise control, windshield wipers, turn signals, windshield washers are all on the turn signal knob. Okay. So you have everything in there. Right. Your control is located right in here for your heating and air conditioning. A warning light. Now this warning light will come on red telling you to check your antenna. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know whether it's up or down or not. It just tells you to check your antenna. Mm -hmm. So you'll learn pretty much to ignore that. Okay. This little guy here in the center with the TV screen is your reverse camera. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh great, there is a power button so that you can turn it on whenever the key's on. It will show you what's back there. Right. Mm -hmm. With that button off, whenever you put it in the reverse, the camera will come on. Okay. Okay. And it doesn't hurt to run this thing with that on. I mean, it, you would run this with the, you would run it anyway. Would you, under normal circumstances, would people usually keep these going on or uh, it, it basically depends on whether it annoys you or not. I found it really Seeing useful things when flashing we took it on there on and going drive. down the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nice to. Okay. And then I guess the next thing you want to see is all what all the trolley little lights are doing down below yeah. there. Yeah. Let's turn this system off. Do so. I have this, do I have this key off or not? I guess I don't. There yep, is. there you go. Yeah, because the key has to be off for the jacks to work. Turn the power button on. Okay. Wait for this little thing to do its little number there. Uh, Alright, once it starts flashing, hit auto. And the little light will come on. What little light? The little light right beside auto will come on. I see. And what what's it doing now? It's going to start leveling the unit. It's putting oh, down. It's putting down the legs. Yep, putting down okay. the legs. And How much leveling can you get out of this thing? If I'm on a grade like this, will it? What, can I bring the back end up? Will it do? Whoa. Uh, you may get enough out of it. If not, you can put some blocks under it. But remember, I would not get the rear tires off the ground because uh, if you do, the unit can roll. Okay. That because makes sense. the e-brake. This thing, those things are powerful enough to lift this thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, they'll take it off the ground. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. We just, now, leveled, we just leveled out. What, what did it just do? It should have been level in here now. What we're waiting for is for this little green foot in the center to come on. This is good. This is nice. Right now it's putting down the rear You said jacks. it will take it off the ground or it won't? It, it will if it needs to. Yep. But then what will you do? Then if you said don't let the rear tires come off the ground, what would you do then? Um, actually, um... Well, if it, I put this down on somebody's driveway... We already and rolled our like pop-up, so I'm nervous about things I'll, like uh, that. <laughs> I'd, actually, I'd actually find myself in a situation on our driveway if I did if I leveled this where the back wheels could come off the ground. I, I got it just, it's about that much. I don't know if it would or wouldn't. Hmm, that's kind of funny. And there it went. It just told you it's level. Yep. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty neat. I like that. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Now we don't have to do anything. Now let's screw around what I did. Thing now for... Crazy and we can't drive off with this thing with the levelers. They won't. They won't there will be safety. an audible alarm sound off telling you that the right. jacks are down. Right. Okay. Yeah. And how do I how do you them? take it off? Turn it on. Wait for it to do its little thing. Ah, I see. And hit retract. Now this is where it gets a little noisy. Because it does it all at once. Now it's running all of them all one shot. Right. That's all right. Is it? Is it? You can, since this is automatic, you're, there's no reason or need to be hitting one jack one at a time or anything. Or if you want to change a tire, you can, yes. Ah. 
Yeah, so that's cool. So you don't even have to look at a jack out under you can just do a tire. That's cool. So that would be like if you had a problem like that, you would want to... What you would do is turn the system on. Yeah. You always got to start by turning the system on. Right. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then you would... Um, you hold the manual position uh, till the light comes on. I see. Now you can use each individual jack as you want and to. You can change the tire if you needed to. Yep. If you had a tire, I look at the move one of those tires. They're like 22 and a half inches tall. Okay, yeah. Cool. I don't know if you'd be able to break it loose. Yeah. Is the problem. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> um, triple A or Good Sam's Club, let them come out and change it. Yeah. Triple A will cover this. Yeah, you should call them. I should contact them. Well, we're going to go over if we do well, a trip go over anyway, so get, get some papers. Some papers yeah. Okay, and cool. That if not, that. The, the Good Sam's Club is a very good club because it's for RV owners. Good right. Sam's Club? Good yep, Sam's it's called Good Sam's Club. Okay. Mm. okay. You'll see it in any motorhome magazine. They have big advertisements for it. And it is. It's a very good club. They even All have right. uh, insurance now for them. Okay. Really? So mm -hmm. it's a huge company. <laughs> okay, nice. cool. Cool. All right, then uh, over here you do have a switch for your overhead light. Yep, I checked that out already. Yep. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yep. And um, you yours comes too. off the dimmer switch. Oh, the dimmer switch, okay. Yep. Oh, I see, there's one here. Huh, yep. I give me a magazine while I'm driving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cool. All, All right. right. Is that it? Here, yep. That's it. I'm going to pull this seat back up. Okay. Yeah, yeah we couldn't that? get. No, I, I turned it off and then he now, started. I this seat figured will turn that out around and become part of the living room, but that seat right there will not because it will hit the steering wheel. Right. Okay, we figured that out too. All right, up in here then for your converting signals. I got it. Your converter is located right here. You do have a remote for that. It's one of these in here. Mm -hmm. Uh, your VCR and DVD player, right. and then this right here is your signaling source. Okay. In other words, um, this is the main TV right here. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch it off the antenna, you push antenna. If you want to watch it off the VCR, push VCR. If you're hooked up the cable TV out there, you just simply push cable TV. Simple. Or if I pick up a direct TV box and want to hook up to the antenna. Yep, you can hit your satellite. Yeah, we can actually take a direct TV box along with us and hook it. That's what they told us anyway. The one in your house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing over here is for the rear TV. It has the same controls as the front one. Okay. And then this one right here in the center marked VCR, that is for recording. Okay. The, off the VCR. You right. can record right. off of any of those signal right. sources. Sure. Okay. But yes, yeah, your satellite hookup. If you wish to engage it, um, you can take it out of your house and bring it along. Your hookups are located in here for it. Okay, cool. And they are marked satellite in and to TV. And your control is up in here to turn that dish on. Okay, they're located right here. There you go. Thank you. I see it. That will turn your satellite on. Right. I, I got that. I know I can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Okay, cool. Okay. But um do you have the telephone hookups to your satellite at home? Your the, uh, receivers? Uh it has telephone hookups. Yeah, do you have them hooked up? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because most of them make you hook them up, but uh since not, um you're you'll be fine with yours. Yeah, no, I don't have them. I do, um, I do everything pretty much off the internet. I want to download or something like that or do a movie. Yeah. I have to have internet service if I do it, but I'll, I'll work through it. I'm pretty good with the tech yeah. side of this. Uh, you may also want to just inform DirecTV that it will become a mobile unit. Yeah. Therefore, if wow. they go to turn it off and find it in Texas somewhere. Yeah, well, they told, <laughs> I called them already. And they yeah. said, just, he said, just don't plug it and take it with you. Take it with you, said, exactly. Said, the only thing will happen, you won't be able to get the local channels because the signal will beam out of the different, the different, the different it won't make any difference. You just take it with you, we don't care. Yep. That's well, what you told me. I guess we can live with that, can't we? <laughs> yeah, I like that. We don't care. I have one at my hunting camp. I put one dish up there and put a receiver right. up there. 
Is that a battery operated clock? Excuse me? Is that a battery operated clock? Yes. Okay. To get that off the wall, you need to turn this thing off. Ah! It's Velcro. Nice. It's Velcro. Cool. Yep. Uh, I didn't actually, actually didn't think it was working. That's why I asked. The little Rotate. one I have out in the garage is a reverse magnet like that one. Okay, mm -hmm. what else do we need here? All right, uh, over here we do have some switches. Oh, yeah. Your patio light where it says oh, there's a patio. entry. That'll give you these lights. Right. Your step, once you arrive at your campsite, open up your door, and then you can turn these steps off so they're not in and out all the time. Oh, I see. That's what that means. Ah. Yeah. If you forget to turn the step back on, when you close the door, as soon as you turn that key on, that steps are going to come in. When you open up this door when you arrive, they will go out and stay out. That's why we thought we were driving along with it on because it was on, when we opened the door, they were already out. Yep. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's why right. you asked that and question. And then this switch right here turns all the compartment lights off. Right, okay. Oh, okay. So you if can't it's forget on, and leave them on. Oh. All the compartment lights like out, when um, not, when in the basement? In. in the basement. Yep, in part. the basement. So you have to leave that off and if you're not using them? Yep. Okay, otherwise it'll And lose. down below there will you be your battery disconnect. Um, whenever you're done using the unit, um, just hit the disconnect on your way out the door, and it shuts down the batteries in here. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, that's so they actually, won't draw. That's actually a fail-safe at the bottom. Yep. You're not using in case you left something no. on, right. it it'll, shuts it'll it down. Off. That's cool. Yep. That's good to know. Okay, cool. And it's marked on off on it. Right. Now, remember, it will not disconnect if you're plugged into electric. Because it's being charged, it will not disconnect. Right, that makes sense. Yep. And you know, what I what I what I like one of the things that you said. I wanted to get this. The, the, the important thing is that uh, we can use this rig during the winter if we're going to go away for a couple of weeks. All we got to do is keep propane in it. Yep. You know, and, and, and uh, keep the heat on. We keep the heat on. And we you can keep it on minimum setting. Right, and we don't necessarily have to worry about it. Then. Right. And. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's good. That's really good to know because we could actually go away and not think of not to worry yeah. about it. That's why we didn't leave right away. We weren't yeah, we really sure to make plans and, and, and we wanted to talk to you to go through this first to see. <laughs> okay. All right, the stove burners themselves. Yeah. I guess we gotta kinda find a place to put them if you want to use the stove. There's no there's no storage for them or anything. Right. Okay. <laughs> Well, you would turn the burner on, hit the spark igniter until it fires off, and it gives you your three burners. What's the spark igniter? Because I was taping. You just push? You turn. Oh, okay. You see the little arrows? Mm -hmm. They tell you all the time on which way to turn it. If you turn right. it backwards, it snaps the knob off. And it's, it's, you, <laughs> you don't want to turn it that way. You yeah. don't want to turn it that way, you will break mm -hmm. it. Okay. They uh, recommend you using the front burner first. Is that what they do to turn burner, on? The front burner, being in red, is a high output burner. It allows you, if you'll take notice, see how high that one burns mm -hmm. versus that one. Okay. Wait, this one will you allow you to boil water, where the other two won't. Okay. The other two don't get hot enough to boil water. The front one will. Okay. And always turn it in the direction of the spark. Okay. Oh, so this is just the spark knob. Right. This yep. gets turned. That's just the spark. Okay. You turn on your, you turn on your gas. I'll probably okay. use that. That's why. Mm -hmm. turn, then you turn it that way, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't turn it back that way. You never turn it back that way, okay? So then you turn it off. And down below here we've got the fuses and 110 breakers. Okay. Just push on it. There you go. That's pretty There standard. are your 110 breakers. Pretty standard. That's probably a fuse box over here. Yep. Do you have to keep fuses that on board? That door you have to pull out. Do you have to keep there. fuses on board with you then? or? No. Actually, I really wouldn't worry about it. They rarely ever blow, but they're really? always there for a safety. How oh, nice it is. I mean, it's all cleaned out. I mean, it's real nice. Yep. It does that okay. We're good. We're good. Your refrigerator. To operate it, you would turn it on. And... AES, Automatic Energy Selector. Mm -hmm. If it has electric, it's going to operate on electric. If it does not have electric, it will go to gas. Mm -hmm. oh. As long so, as the gas is turned on. Yep. For the most part, you're going to leave it on AES. AES okay, being, let it. AES being electric. the Automatic Energy Selector. The automatic, you're right, yep. Right. Let it do its own thing. Oh, you have to worry about it. Now, um, if you want to use gas only, 
push the ABS and turn it off for the AES, and it will go to gas only. Right. If I'm running this on a 15 watt system and I'm plugged into my house, okay, for right. extension cord, okay. Switch this to gas only. Switch this to gas only. Yep. Okay. Because it won't it will pull too much. Uh, it'll actually draw five, five amp. Not five amp. Yep, five amp. So, you know, when you're talking, you have a 15 amp service, and you just drew five of those amps. If you turn the air conditioner on, you're going to be over amp. Right, right. That makes yep. sense. Okay. And that's the reason for that. Right. And your temperature settings up here, your one okay. through five, and then back down to one. I would suggest starting off on three. Mm -hmm. What are the what are the CLG? And that turns on heating elements inside here. Heating. Yeah. Um, if you ever turn, uh, have sweating in here, oh. you can turn on your your That's units your, here and an your climate controls, yeah. and it will help this thing operate more efficiently. Okay. And your instructions are right in here. Right. So the water tank and everything else, I and mean, some of the RVSBs I've had, I wouldn't want to drink the water on board, but we're we're good here, right? I mean, it's, right. Mm. Right now, it's winterized. Is it the water? Tank? Excuse me. Is the water tank winterized or just emptied? Right it's now? just empty, right? Okay. Yeah. It's just, it's just, that's all you really do. You don't that's all you do. Don't, don't put any in for any freezing. What's that water? light mean down here? That is a LP gas leak detector. Well, that's a good thing. What's that? And that's a good thing. And what, if it's telling. green, what what is a green means okay, and it would be green red. Tells you that it's good. Mm -hmm. Now you can tell it didn't get heavy enough in here to set that off. Right, right. And so it really wasn't in any problem. Or something, or scream it's yeah, it'll change. beep just like a smoke detector. Now okay, that's well that's a good thing. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good thing to know. How much time you got? Um, 18 minutes. Really? You got that much? I've been turning it off and on. Well, don't do that. I want it on. I know, okay. but I've, I've been turned it off. I mean, I right. Right. don't I, get I, excited. I got, I got another one in my pocket. Okay. This is going to be handy. Did you ever have anyone tape you tape doing this before? <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> Indirect lights. Turn them on to run away for the evening, or if you just want some lights without being real bright in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning and heating system is located right in here. Uh, you have central air at home? Sure. Works pretty much the same way. Coolant. Uh, you have your choice of high and low on your fan speeds. And auto and on. Right. The auto position will shut the unit down once it reaches temperature. On position will simply just shut off the compressor. Continue to run the fan. Okay. So if you if it reaches temperature or is the bedroom did the you say the bedroom was separate? Yes. Is that on that switch there? No. Oh it's in there. Nope, it's in the bedroom. Okay. Okay, good. That would conserve when you're if you didn't have the serve. bedroom on, well, would that affect? Um, say you sit in our driveway and we're heating it. We have the door closed and we don't put the bedroom on. Well, would that be a problem with with keeping the, the water? Um, um, no, reason? actually, the heat's going to heat both sections, and the air conditioning is going to do both it's sections. Of a separate thermostat in the background. We right. Just, Even though there's a separate one back there, it still all runs what's together. The, what's the purpose of having the separate one? Um, on very, very hot days, one is one not going cold. to do the whole unit, okay. the air conditioning. The other thing is, if you're in the living room, run the rear air. If you're in the bedroom, run the front air. Oh, really? That way you don't have the noise. Oh, okay. Right, that makes some sense. That's cool. Okay. We, uh, could, we could travel with this thing in the, in the winter and go away for a couple of weeks. We'd have to hit the propane every once in a while, probably, mm -hmm. to, to run it. Yep, just uh, be careful down south that it is not butane. Make sure that it is propane. There's a difference? Yeah. Butane has a lower boiling point. It does not work well up here in the north. But they uh, use it down south because it's it cheaper. And it doesn't get cold, right? It does get <laughs> Can you get propane? I mean, you can get... Regular propane down south. Yep. Maybe you can get it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, when you start getting down in the mm -hmm. lower part of Texas and into Mexico and stuff, mm -hmm. we're gonna is when you're going to run into butane. Okay. We're gonna, yeah, yep. we're going to run across country on this. Some, sometime in the next couple of months, we're going to take off for a month or two. And um, I don't know exactly when. The, uh, uh, okay, okay. And, but we could run it, we could run it and pretty much keep the temperature stable. 
yep. pretty much all the time. Yeah, what you want to do is, is for your furnace, you can run the furnace, set your temperature down at like 50 degrees or 40 degrees, and it'll stay that in here when you're not in it. Right. And then when you do come in, turn it up. Okay. Cool. Cool. Right. And your controls here then for your attic fan. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, cool. Does it work? No. No. It might be too cold in here. Oh, it's automatic. It's uh, t climate control. I heard something. Yeah. What's that do? Yeah, it's too cold in here to not get it to operate. But you can manually crank this thing up. What are we but cranking? The um, oh. roof vent lid. Oh, okay. But yes, yeah, so it is thermostatically controlled. What it is designed for, it's an attic fan. It's designed for cooling. Yeah, it Off of 12 volt. Right. And if it gets too cold in here... Well, there it went. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Oh, well, that's giving us our fan anyway. That's fan, not vent. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I lifted my hand. I thought I. Yep. So you can use the fan at any time, but the vent is thermostatically controlled. Yeah, and yeah. that lid's not up or anything. We're not going to go down the road today and get a leak if it rains, are we? Yep. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. There we go. We got into the bathroom area. Turn some lights on in here. All right. Light switches right in here. Makeup and shower light. And your water pump switch located here to turn your water pump on. Mm -hmm. Is that for just the, uh, the sink for the shower in the sink and the toilet in the thing or all right uh there's one one water pump controls everything okay and that's that and that's this one right here yep okay 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 over here this is your bedroom lights your hall lights and be this one right here mm -hmm. um the stool area i think they have their own separate switch in there mm -hmm. uh it should be right around now the do you corner. have to use chemicals for the toilet mm-hmm yeah the chemicals will help break the waste down mm -hmm. and control odor. So does it have it in them now, or do we have to purchase them? That was that blue stuff. Okay, now, it does have it chemical. in it. So it has a charge in it right now, mm -hmm. uh, and it won't freeze. But is, what's it, it's a, something you put the in? The charge won't freeze. Does that mean the toilet could be used until we get to a dump site? Uh, whatever you put in it could freeze. Whatever you put okay. in it yeah. If it gets above the dilution, it will freeze. But as long as it's heated, that, that part won't freeze. Pardon? Well, if you're drinking a lot of alcohol and you're using it, it would be okay. Yeah, because <laughs> it would already have its antifreeze for you. Yes, I get it. Smart ass. <laughs> okay, got that. Got that. All right, the levels test. Your LP is full, and these are all empty. Your fresh water, your holding, your gray tank is your sink and shower, your holding is your black. And your battery is reading charge because it's being charged right now. Mm -hmm. As as things start to fill up, these lights are going to come on. Your fresh water tank will be full and it will start coming down if you use that. Same with your LP. Right now it's reading full. It will start falling as you're using it. What do you mean it will start falling? I'm not quite sure I understand what you're saying. The, okay, this is your full for your charge. Right. That's for your as charge. As it starts going down, as soon as you start using your propane, it's going to drop down to two thirds. Okay. Okay. And then as you use more of it and get below two thirds, it's going to drop down to a third. Your outside gauge gives you exactly what's in that tank. Okay. Okay, so when this gets down to a third, go out there and look. Make sure that it, it still has some propane what are in the, it. What are the increments along in here? Uh, this here would be your full, mm -hmm. two thirds, and quarter, and empty. Oh, okay, it's just running the. Okay, I yep. see what it's doing. And we're just testing. This is just for the. This is just for the LP. Uh, no, it's, it's actually that brings the, test your fresh water tank. You have to push the button to make it work. Where right? does the fresh water tank come in? Which right here. These right here. 
Okay. This okay. set. And then your holding tank will use this set of them. And then your gray tank will use the last set of lights. Okay, and I see it says it across the bottom and it's just going up that way. Yep. Okay, I get it. Okay, I didn't quite get what you were talking about there. Okay. And you have your water pump switch. There again. Your water heater. Electric side and your gas side. Cool. Okay. Now your gas side, this light here should light and Whoa. fire it off. Yep. But there's no water in it, right? Oh, if it fails the light, this light will come on. It's a red light telling you that it failed the light. Right, okay. Right, okay. Generator start stop switch right in here. Got it, Got it. now that works. Okay. Yep. And right That's now it has 87 you... hours on it. That's the same What kind of hours you could you inside. expect to get out of, the, out, of, out of that unit? Five, six. I've seen them as high as eight. Hundred? Thousand? Thousand? Yeah. Oh, thousand. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay. Our biggest problem that we have with generators are is our customers do not use them enough. And then when they go for them, they don't want to run. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Use it or lose it. Um, right. If um, you're going to have more than two people driving down the road in here, mm -hmm. shut the engine air off, start the generator, run the roof air. Uses the same amount of fuel, cooling the whole coach. Wow. Okay. That means that. Thank you for that. What was that again? Did you, did you tape it? I taped it. Yeah. This I don't need that. Mine's caps on. I'm only kidding. That's <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah. Then run the roof air. Okay. Mm -hmm. Run the roof air. If you're driving down the road, and you want to. You're gonna have more than a couple people in here. You want to keep this place, the whole place, cool. Run the roof air. It doesn't use any more gas to run the roof air than it does to run the, the air off the off the main. Oh. It's using the same tank anyway. And it also lets that motor breathe a little better. Right. That makes sense. Okay. And then into the bedroom. I just love that door. Yeah. So I love this bedroom. I love it too. I'm making these things big. Yeah, this is not this in yet. Yeah. Carbon monoxide detector up there. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's like the smoke detector. If it right. Smells it, it's going to set the alarm off. Mm -hmm. Down below for your air conditioning. Um, I do believe this only has one furnace. So that switch for furnace will not operate if it has furnace on it. It does, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so that's just, it's there if you want to add another furnace, but it will not operate the furnace. Any reason they need another furnace, you think? I wouldn't imagine why you would. Uh, that furnace should be more than enough for this coach. Okay. There was a, a stupid question for you, but not really. And this once this folds out, there's a door over on this side. Some of these units and, and uh, uh, I, I, some of these units actually have a washer dryer combination. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that installable in this unit? Uh, something I could probably let's go ahead and hit this open. Here. Bedrooms ready. Slide bedrooms. Bedroom. You have to do this one at the same time, nope. right? Now. Uh, nope. Yeah, you, you guys are doing yeah, it. It's a safety switch. So you can't stand behind Let's see it if this or does do have it the to somebody. Of having the uh, washing machine. I was just curious. Maybe not. I don't see the plumbing for it. Mm -hmm. It's not tragic. Um, no, it's, not, it's not a mandate. I was just thinking, I was just curious. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it could be installed somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything's possible. I don't think we'll worry about that some other time. <laughs> yeah, the only problem that I've found with those, the uh, washer dryers are incredibly expensive. A couple grand. For an mm -hmm. RV, yeah. yeah a couple, couple grand. grand. Yeah, mm -hmm. check them out. Right? Yep. <laughs> I saw the same unit with one in this hole. Yep. Yeah, and I saw the same, not uh, on, on, online, but that's okay. And then underneath here we have some chairs. I yep. came with it because somebody, what they did here. You know what like they did? They, did today. you notice that the dining room wasn't standard? The, the seating, that's different. They, yeah, they added, they added the, it. The leaf on the table. Because it, no, because, no, they not the, the leaf. The, yeah, the benches weren't there when it was bought. Yeah. Couldn't oh. have been. It okay. Couldn't have been. Because of the different material and the different wood different. down here. They this they, There was a no, two no, no, chairs. No, yeah, can look at it. <laughs> There were two chairs here. Well, I've seen this unit and online. So they added that. Look, see the wood? 
Yeah, this yeah, whole section. Right. This, section, this wasn't these here. Were not there. Those chairs were used in here, and the and the and this. They had these. Ref they they had these they don't fabricated because they couldn't find look how the material to use, so they had these put in. She doesn't care much for it, but I like it. I hate more the difference in it, but that's but not. But I might leather, a no, can leatherize. It's not a, I can take them over to Gibbles and turn yeah. them into the same color leather as them, yeah. and it'll look just. It's not a deal perfect. breaker for the for, for the color of the. Yeah, right yeah, you can go have them. leather covers put on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or cloth ones, but it's not a deal breaker. It's just that it was. I know they weren't there. That yeah, we, never mm, noticed it. I noticed it when I looked online, and none of them had these. And I was like, "Look at the difference in the wood." No, that's cool. I wonder how they did it. They must have ordered this. And that's why the chairs. Well, are yeah, they ordered them from their dealer, and, mm -hmm. which was here, right? Got what they could have. Mm -hmm. no, oh, I didn't All see right. this before. Did you so, know this? Yeah, the door shuts. Oh. Yeah, it gives you privacy for the front and the back in case you have somebody staying with you. Yeah, I and like that. You can that. shut this door and that door, and this is a this is a common bathroom. Not, not a common space, well, but a separate yeah. room. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Emergency escape window out over that side. Just oh, flip the two okay. handles slip. up and push the window out. It is mm -hmm. hinged at the mm -hmm. top. And jump up and hope there's grass. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we lay hay, we pick some hay bales along. We throw them in the bottom. They can't wait. <laughs> And we put them outside the window. No. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody comes along and flips a cigarette. Yeah, it's going out the other door anyway. In the event of a fire, I think I could get out of this. Even if I had to kick that window we, out we the we back. Find, <laughs> we find a way. Mm -hmm. Find a way. You know, um, All right. one of our manufacturers, I think it was Jayco, has a emergency escape right across from the entrance door. Wow. And it's like, why did you do that? And they yeah, said, kind of well, strange. in case of a fire. It's like, you know, just get out the door. Well, what if the fire's on the other side of that door? Uh, <laughs> he said, you got to get out this side. It's like, well, it doesn't yeah. make sense then. So that's why they are opposites. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. It works. We're good, dude. We're always I'm thinking sure. fire in the coach, but they're thinking yeah. fire maybe outside if you're in the woods somewhere. That's your stereo in here. That's the speaker. Yep, thing. I got it. What's yep. this thing up top here? Oh, it's your smoke detector. That's carbon yeah, monoxide. That. Yeah, yeah. Carbon monoxide. Okay. All right. That was, a, that was a heck of a thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else that we need to know, Jeff? I don't know. Should be about what is it. that on the on the floor of that We're inside of in there? In here? Yeah, is that an extra... Um. What is that on the floor? There stops to keep these things in. What do you mean? What you would do is once the room is in, and I think it's for that one over there, they go between the wall and the slide out so that it can't be out. It can't be taken out. What do you mean? I'm confused. Back in the 90s and I guess 2000, they don't send them along anymore. They figured that people wanted to make sure that the slide outs were going to stay in while traveling. So they sent these things along. Stay in. Yep. Oh, stay in. So, oh. so oh. that they is can't be out. Any Where would you use that at? People were app? afraid they were going to fall out while driving down the road. Is there any remote possibility of that? I can't even imagine. I don't see how it could be. The They're motor in. has a, uh, a gear in yeah, it right. that only allows it to turn okay. when there's power activated. Yeah, okay. That's really bizarre. Yeah. So really, that's really, no yeah. use. Whoa. Oh, you got two of them in there? They probably do. I don't know. If there's it don't, it I only see the one. It doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter. I was just curious what it was. That's, yeah, that was yep. Point. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm good. But they used to have them for everything. Mm -hmm. Now nobody sends them along. Okay. Okay. That was a, that was a really informative walkthrough. Okay. Good yep, job. Call us if you need help. If you can't figure out something, you call us up. Okay. Cool. Okay? That works for, works me. for me. All right. Oh, We're not going to forget you. Trust me, you're going to receive a letter every year from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Telling you to come in and trade it back in. <laughs> no, this is a one-shot deal, right? <laughs> but, uh, no, if, if you have questions, you give us a call. Yeah, we're, we're going from pop up to I this, so I don't think there's much farther to I don't go think than this. Can go much bigger. I don't think we're fit it anymore. Well, you to be imagine what you can get in here. <laughs> well, I know. I've seen them. Yeah. Experience with gas on this thing. I mean, on these 
gas. Gas mileage? Yeah. Uh, depending on how you drive, uh, you you should get anywhere from seven to ten. Mm -hmm. uh, ten if you're easy on the throttle, no rapid starts. Uh, right. Let it walk up over hills rather than push it up over hills. Right. Um, seven if you're one of these heavy throttle people. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. it's just, all going to depend on how you drive just, it. Just a question. Okay. Yep. All right, I'm ready. I mean, she'll she'll rip and rear if you want to let her go. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to release the pony, she'll be more glad to eat the hay. <laughs> uh, I couldn't tell you. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Okay, the maiden voyage of the crew, Georgie Boy Cruise Master. When you get to the gate, you'll put... Seatbelt. Going out the door. <laughs> this is probably the last garage you're going to take it out of. The maiden voyage of the Georgie Boy Cruise Master, Barry Driving. So how's the drive? <laughs> oh, it's pretty long. <laughs> that thing light up in the sunlight. the trucking lot. We go get our gift? You can go, yeah. Are you going to drive it across the road? Do you get it? Why? Okay. There you go. Your new bus. Let the party I've begin. I've be a bus driver. I was a cab driver for a while. Now I'm a bus driver. <laughs> Let the party begin. Check it out. The maiden voyage. Brand new RV. Oh. You gonna make that baby? I think how sweet this really sweet. You maneuvered that pretty good. Jerry, the guy that sold us the RV, waiting for us there. Gates a nice big target. What? That works. That works. <laughs> Do. Thanks, man. All right, thanks. Okay, bye bye. That's cool. And any other goodies? They're waiting for us. Oh, yeah. Get <laughs> Got lots of room there. Okay.